the view component that we have looked at in React Native can be thought of as a div in web development except for one key difference and that is that unlike the div, the view component does not support scrolling. There is a different component within React Native called the scroll view which does support scrolling. So let's take a look at some of his key features and tips and tricks. Now one thing to be aware of is that you might think that you only need a scroll view if you have a lot of children to display like a list. However, here is a simple piece of text that we are currently displaying within a view. But what happens if this text becomes too big? For example, we have this entire song lyrics. So instead of having that simple hello fam text, if we import the lyrics from the lyrics module and display that within the text component, all of a sudden it no longer fits on screen. And the user wanting to do a scroll but not being able to do so can be a very frustrating experience. And the solution is pretty simple. Whenever you think that you are going to be displaying large portions of content, for example, a lot of text, a couple of images, or in the general use case, a list of items, wrap that in a scroll view. Now, in my opinion, there is something quite nice about the built-in scroll view that comes with React Native. It's just smooth and buttery. Now, the scroll view component provides a number of events that you can subscribe to. As an example, let's create a global variable called index, which we initialize to one. And then on each on scroll, console.warn, on scroll, followed by the index that we then increment. Now, this particular event you can think of as your god hook because this gets fired all the time. And as you interact with the scroll view, you can see that we get lots of on scroll events. There are more specific handlers as well. For example, there is on scroll begin drag, which will only get fired as soon as the user grabs the view with the intent to scroll. And of course, there are other similar event handling props as well. Now, in addition to lots of props for events, there are props that can be used to customize the behavior of the scroll view as well. For example, consider the scroll view where we have lots of text inputs. For example, this can be a very long form that the user has to scroll in order to see all of the fields. And when the user selects an input field to type something into it, of course, the keyboard will pop up. But if the user then decides to scroll the scroll view, by default, the keyboard will stay because the user is, of course, still focused on that input. However, there is a property on the scroll view that can change this behavior called keyboard dismiss mode, which we can set to on drag. And now as soon as the user drags the view with the intent to scroll, that keyboard gets dismissed. And of course, as soon as the user focuses an input, that keyboard pops up again and we can dismiss it with further scrolling. Now there is actually even more power baked into the scroll view that we can access by using methods on its reference. For example, in chat messaging and notification style user experiences, there is often a need to scroll to the end to view the latest information. So let's add a button at the top of our view to trigger such a desire. Now there is a method provided by the scroll view which we can invoke to trigger such a scroll. But in order to do that, the first thing that we have to do is get a reference to the scroll view which we can do with the React built-in useRef hook. We bind this ref to the ref prop on the scroll view and when the scroll view now gets rendered, we will get a handle to the scroll view instance in ref.current. So in the on press of our scroll to the end button, we can use ref.current and invoke the method scroll to end on the scroll view. So now if you press the button scroll to end, you can see the scroll view scrolling to the end. Now, sometimes you don't want to scroll to the end and instead you need to scroll to a specific portion of the scroll view. As an example, let's say you want to scroll to the top, which is Y coordinate zero. And to do that, we use the scroll to method and provide that Y coordinate. So now we have a button that we can use to scroll to the end and then a button to scroll to the top. Now notice that there is a nice animation that happens in each of these method invocations, but these methods also take the animated property, which we can set to false. And now our scroll to end is still with animated true, but scroll to top is going to do a direct jump to the top of the scroll view. Now we've actually been looking at the vertical scrolling support provided by the scroll view, but let's take a look at how it supports horizontal scrolling as well. For this demo, we have an array of colors, which you might remember from our Flexbox demo. Each of the members of this array has a name as well as a color value. And then we have this box component that takes a color value as the background color prop and then renders a simple view with the style of a fixed width and the background of the background color. Now within our app component, we will render a simple flexbox row view. And for the children of this row, we will iterate over the colors and render them out into individual box components. Now, of course, these are intentionally too many colors to fit horizontally within a single row. 
so we need to give the users some way of scrolling through them if we don't want them to get frustrated. And no surprise, the solution would be to use the scroll view. So we wrap the box components within a scroll view and all of a sudden, all of the box components disappear. This is because currently, the scroll view is trying to scroll its children vertically and in order to do that, it needs to determine how much height the individual children need. So it asks the box components, Psst, how much height do you need? And the box is like, mm, I don't know, zero would be fine. And so the scroll view is like, here, take zero. And therefore we see none of the boxes on screen. Now, of course, the individual boxes do have a width set to them because we wanted them to be used horizontally. And fortunately for the scroll view, there is a property called horizontal, which we can set to true. And now that the scroll view is intending to scroll horizontally in terms of height, it's going to tell the children, hey, my parent has this much height, take all of it. But how much width do you need because I intend to scroll you horizontally and the view components will be like we need 100 and that's exactly how much they get. Now you can see that we have the individual boxes showing up and thanks to the horizontal scroll view, we can scroll through them as well. Thanks for watching till the end. Join me in the next lesson in this series. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.